Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 26, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I would like to call your attention to a bit of research being undertaken by NOAA. And this research is fingerprinting high tide impacts for U.S. coastal areas as it relates to rising sea level. Now before I go into it, I'd just like to say that rising sea level is a signature signal of human-caused climate change. Increasing atmospheric temperatures and ocean temperatures are causing land glaciers to melt and sea fronting glaciers to melt and are thermally expanding the Earth's oceans, and this is causing ocean levels to rise. Now, of course, the primary cause of this warming is human-based fossil fuel burning, as well as human greenhouse gas emissions, which trap more heat in the Earth's atmosphere, most of which is ultimately transmitted to the ocean system. And since a lot of glaciers around the world have submerged faces, particularly in Antarctica and Greenland, and front the ocean system in depths of hundreds of meters, often cases, this warming ocean system is, is starting to have a major effect on large glacial melt, and sea level rise around the world is starting to accelerate. Now, for the United States, we have seen a major increase in the frequency of high tide flooding events along the coast. And since the 1950s, according to NOAA, high tide flooding in the U.S. has increased by 300, by between 300 and 900 percent since the 1950s. And you know, there are a lot of people that seem to think that, oh, well, sea level rise is something that won't affect coasts for another 10 or 20 or 30 years or 100 years or so. Well, the truth is that high tide flooding is, is getting worse and sea level rise is affecting coasts now. And, and this coastal flooding is, is increasingly a nuisance and a hindrance to, to coastal communities. And though this, this nuisance signal is rising, it's, it's worth noting that sea level rise has not yet become catastrophic, but, but sea level rise doesn't have to get to catastrophic levels for there to be problems. So, so this graph was posted by Climate Signals. We, we spoke a bit about climate, climate signals before, and they are presently on Twitter, and they have posted quite a, a lot of climate change related, fingerprint related information, and I recommend you check it out. Now, going over to the NOAA site, we find that according to NOAA, high tide flooding is now occurring from 10 to 20 days per year in, in many major cities. And that prolonged high sea levels along the West Coast and prevailing changes along the East Coast during certain events such as El Nino or major weather events are also worsening related tidal flooding. And as I said before, the percent increase in tidal flooding since the 1950s and 1960s is 300% to 925%, so a major increase in high tide flooding. And I'm just going to show you this NOAA graphic here. So NOAA is presently producing a annual report on high tide flooding called uh, Patterns and Projection, well, called um, Tides and Currents. And this, this annual report is, is providing increasing information about how human-caused climate change as it relates to sea level rise is affecting U.S. coastal cities. And if you look at this map here, just checking the time. So if, we, if you look at this map here, you can see where along the U.S. east coast 
sea level rise is occurring at a more rapid rate. So, so as the shift moves towards red, the, the sea level rise rate is higher, and this is in millimeters per year. And as the color shifts towards blue, the, uh, the sea level rise rate is lower or, or possibly negative. So it's worth noting that sea level rise is not even around the world, and that's due to the way winds and currents uh, change, as well as the way gravity balance changes in the world ocean system. But in most regions around the world now, the oceans are rising. But along the U.S. East Coast and Gulf Coast, you can see that the sea level rise is pr particularly acute. And, and NOAA here gives a, a sample for minor flood days each year for Norfolk, Virginia. And you see that about by at 1955, there were about one minor flood day per year. And by the present time frame, the number of minor flood days per year has increased to nine. And, and as you can see, NOAA provides a sine curve statistic just to give a, a, an, an indication of how frequent high tide events are and, and what the trend is between minor, moderate, and major flooding events. Now, as sea level rise increases, Norfolk and hundreds, uh, uh, perhaps thousands of other locations along the U.S. East Coast will see worsening minor, moderate, and major flooding events. Now, I just do want to show you this graphic provided by NOAA that's color-coded that, that takes tide gauges at specific points along the coast in the United States and provides indicators for tidal flooding trends. And the, this bar at the lower end provides information about how many times per year each location sees tidal flooding. And so a blue number, I'm mean, so a blue color ind indicates zero. And as it lightens up, there's more. And as you head into red, you can get up to 10 days or more per year. So, so and as you can see, so this is a temporal graph showing it starts in the 1950s and ends at 2015. And as you can see, many locations are seeing increased rates of tidal flooding as the color shifts from blue to red. Now, not all locations are showing the shift, but the majority of locations are. And again, as human-caused climate change worsens, we will tend to see pretty much all of these tide gauges shift toward the red. And NOAA also provides location for frequency. So if you're, if you're looking at Atlantic City, you can see that tidal flooding days have increased from around one per year to nearly 10 per year. And Norfolk, Virginia was already indicated. San Diego, the rate of, of change is not as high, but you're talking about a tripling since the 1950s. And about the same with Seattle. So, so a very good resource. I recommend you take a look at it and and also recommend that that you take into account the fact that sea level rise is is already having effects on on numerous cities and locations along the coast and that the number of of tidal flooding events is increasing and and this is due to sea level rise and as one final statement, I'd just like to add that, that rising sea levels provide a higher platform for storms that do occur in the ocean, so a higher platform for storm surge type events. And so all of these locations along the coast are becoming more and more vulnerable to storms simply because of the sea level rise that is ongoing due to human-caused climate change. Now, thank you for joining me, and I will be chatting with you soon.